Hey everyone, and welcome to Baka Talk, the only podcast in the whole wide world. Yes, we are the only one. That is Weeds, the one that knows everything. Yes, sure. And I'm also joined by Pyrolis. There is none other BTS as good as us. The one that knows nothing. I know what? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So welcome to the show. Hope you enjoy, and let's get into it. What are we talking about today? I don't, I don't know. know. We didn't actually plan anything. We didn't. We didn't play Steins Gate today because uh, Boom's computer was being the funky. I'm telling you, it's the TV because I did not change a single setting. What's well, the? If it's the TV, then why don't we just record? Because it would have just been normal when you edited because it. Because I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure the settings that OBS was using to display. The settings my computer was using to display to my TV was affecting OBS to where when it recorded, it showed everything really dark. You can edit it's only that thing I, post. No, I, I, wheeze. It was dark enough where if I tried brightening it up, it would oversaturate it. Right? Probably. That's what I was thinking. I mean, it would probably look janky, so I don't know. Oh, no, the biggest problem was it was flashing. Oh. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was flashing. That was in- it, you'd move the mouse, and it yeah. flashed like, really bright, and then like go down. Oh. I, I couldn't figure it out. If you don't okay. know what we're talking about, check out Bakatok Studios on YouTube. And watch our Steins Gate playthrough. Yeah. yeah, can you watch the previous episode, which would have been episode six? I don't know. I think it's six. I lost yeah. count. We've done so many of them so far. And Thank while you're you, there, check out Pyrolis Plays. Yeah, Pyrolis Ooh. Plays. But yeah, so that was fun. or KBW wrestling. That's what them. That <laughs> yeah, KBW wrestling is also good. Uh, sometimes I don't know. He's a little controversial for me, but oh yeah, you know, yeah, those wrestling fights are sometimes a little too much. Yeah, yeah, that channel that's been dead for like three years. I know so much really controversy. <laughs> so much controversy. I can't believe it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, I did watch anime this week. Did you? I, we no, can always you talk about it. that. Like we, what did? Do. What do you watch? Um. My Hero Academia. I like how it took you a moment to think of it. You're like, I actually watched something this week. Uh... <laughs> that that was the kind of voice of like, I'm an anime fan. Oh yeah, what do you watch? My Hero Academia. Go. Yeah, I just realized how not exciting that was <laughs> to like say. Meeting someone that, and like, oh yeah, I watched many anime. Oh yeah, what one? Naruto, Bleach, uh, Dragon so you're le- Ball. You're, you're legit reenacting a conversation i had with somebody at lake michigan yes where this kid comes up to me and i don't know why he was a he was like a 13 year old or something yeah yeah he's he asked if he could play volleyball with us and he does for a little bit um then he pulls a goku and and goes kamehameha <laughs> he starts talking about how goku can beat certain characters in Naruto. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you, you watch anime. And I'm like, I watch anime. I actually run a podcast about it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, yeah, cool. And I was like, what anime do you watch? He's like, well, I've seen Dragon Ball in Naruto in One Piece. And I'm like, oh, God. He saw Hunter Hunter. That was the he only one Hunter that was like, Hunter. that's kind of surprising because <laughs> Hunter Hunter is like, it's a, um, it's one of the popular ones, but it's like a little bit less popular. And at than that very ones. moment, I could just transfer him over to, Weez and I could walk away and I yeah. was happy. And Weez got. And he was up. like, "Yeah, so Leorio couldn't beat Goku." And I'm like, "Cool." <laughs> <laughs> I just enjoy it when I meet someone who says they're an anime fan. Like, I watched the big three, and that is it. Yeah. yeah. I was like, "You're 25. I've only been watching anime since like 14." It's like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah that's a that's a fan right there. Hard hardcore. You yeah. get them. I know. It's like, what have you watched? Uh, Made in Abyss. It's it's a little bit different than those shows. <laughs> I, I've only watched, you know, Steins Gate. You know, Made in Abyss, uh, Re Zero. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, uh, Tanya the Evil, uh, Goblin like, Slayer. Have you, you know, ever heard too much, of the but... genre of thriller and mystery? <laughs> Or whenever somebody uh, starts talking about like, oh yeah, I watched Dragon Ball and Go and Goku and all that fun stuff, I'm like, can I tell you about the timeline that is the certain scientific series? So like, can I uh, introduce you some pretty good uh, animes like, oh, I don't know, Bunny Girl Senpai? <laughs> How would you like to watch High School DxD? Like, come on, uh, Arrow Manga Sensei? Come on, you're really exploring now. It is kind of weird that so, like, the loudest minority, is that the right word? No, vocal minority of anime mm-hmm. fans are the ones that have watched, like, One Piece. Yeah. 
So yeah. many people, like One Piece and Dragon Ball, so many people on Twitter, that's all they post about. Yeah. yeah. One Piece and freaking Dragon Ball. Every single week when a One Piece episode comes out, they're like, this is peak fiction. Yeah. And it's just, a, there's, it's just a scene of this really fat <laughs> character, like fat woman character. I think she's, she's like Big Mom. Oh, it's or Big something. Mom, yeah. From One Piece, and they're just like, it's peak fiction. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, what? It looks like a stupidly drawn woman. And I'm over here like, here, have a piece of a race. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Just take a little piece. Like, I understand so the quality of some of these shows and a lot of them. There's a reason they're popular. There's an appeal they have. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, you don't have to watch 200,000 episodes yeah. to get and, into a race. Afro you, Samurai? Come on. Like, oh, Afro Samurai. But you know what? I'm not saying One Piece, Dragon Ball um naruto not saying are bad. bad yeah it's baruto is bad yeah i'm not saying naruto <laughs> we're, we're just saying expand a little bit before you yeah. you know yeah. go out on the streets and advocate also the the, the quality biggest... of a person being able to defeat another person in a fight does not make the show any better than anything else like he cannot fight why? one punch man i <laughs> like legit go watch one punch i man. know one punch man like one punch man beats everyone in a fight because it's a gag like yeah, he one punches everyone. That's but you his know what? Deal. He can't fight he, a mosquito. Yeah, the mosquito. Uh, there's this so guy. which automatically makes it where the mosquito is more powerful than Goku <laughs> and Luffy can the, There's this guy in um in um anime Shoshin's Discord. Yeah, that I talk to every once in a while. That that'll randomly pull bring up like fights and stuff. Which like I don't hate people that like do fight. You know. Uh, power scaling yeah. or whatever it's fine i love but, like, watching power scaling stuff. yeah but it's funny because bring he'll bring up like a fight who would win in this and i'm just like the mosquito from one punch yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> pulls up superman who would win the yeah, mosquito from, from one, one punch, punch man. man it's like goku versus superman the mosquito from one punch man and not the ultra powerful mosquito queen no she gets killed yeah. in one punch no the little the mosquito. mosquito the normal well, mosquito. hold on a moment saitama didn't try punching the mosquito he tried. He did slapping try slapping it. it. But you know how she he killed the mosquito queen. Slap he slapped it. the mosquito queen. That's what. What if he? That just means the mosquito queen was weak. That's true. So obviously the mosquitoes just too strong for the slaps. So what if he tried punching it like a super serious punch? Yeah. Didn't he try that? No. He no. just tried. He did not. He just punch. He just like was like. Well, I think oh, what he happened, eventually was chasing after it was spread. Yeah. I think what happened was he was too powerful that when he went to clap his hands together, the sound waves would just hit on each other on his hands and just stop his hands from actually <laughs> doing any power. And he just gently cushioned the mosquito at the end of it, to which it would just fly <laughs> out. The dynamic like... force and pressure of the air being condensed into plasma yes. at the end. Just push the mosquito out the way. Exactly. There, there's, well, if he just like slapped, I think it'd be dead in no shot. Uh, there's this guy that made an anime video talking about like what I said about One Punch Man would beat Goku because it's a joke and yeah. like all that stuff. And he's like, it was just recently he made this video like three years ago, and he got this comment. It's this super long comment that's like, you see, Goku has this and this, and like went over all these ridiculous points. I don't even know what they were saying. They were making up words, and he <laughs> was making, and the words. guy and the guy was like, I posted this three years ago. Leave me alone. <laughs> I just don't understand like how people can get so upset at something like that. Where I know. Post a giant things like, dude, calm down. Like, yeah, it's like Goku beating someone in a fight does not make the show any more compelling to me. Like, there's everything else that you could possibly explain to me about a show besides the person being able to beat someone else in a fight is more interesting to me. Yeah, I've never wanted to watch Dragon Ball because I don't care who Goku can beat in a fight. Obviously, yeah. he beats everyone. If you want to know who beats who in a fight, go watch. I think it's like episode five that we did where we actually teared out people. We did. Like, Yo, <laughs> we most powerful characters in anime. Oh, Yato, Kazuma, and uh, um, Issei from High School and, 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 and like, <laughs> like teamed up. He found the girls, was... like, scooped them up in S tier, and then yeah. everyone else was like, oh, B yeah. Tier and there lower. was a Yato. There was was Yato, it Genos? No, Yato protected Yato, the gates to S tier. Yes, That's what Yato it was. Yato protected the gates to A tier because it was Yato. No, S tier. It was, um, was S tier. That whole thing was going great. We're yeah, that was a tier list. And then as soon as somebody said, "Well, I don't, I don't think it was Yato, but I'm just going to use it as part yeah. of the instance." 
as soon as somebody said, well, Yato's in B tier, so instantly all these characters can't go past yeah. B tier. I'm like, oh my god, uh, we have was, bosses it now. It was Koro Sensei. Koro it was Sensei. Koro Sensei. Sensei. As be... soon as he got in, like, children could pass him, but like, um, no one nobody else, else could. could. What's your name from Arrow Manga Sensei? Uh, Oh, the main character, main yeah, heroine the character. main girl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she was in like bottom of C tier, and then he was beneath her. So then it was like everyone else is like, they can't be Goro Sensei. What the heck? So they're D tier. <laughs> they're D tier. <laughs> no, she was ahead of Goro Sensei because you were like, I hate to admit this, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was above him. That's why he was so low. But then yeah. there's Kazuma that teamed up with the character from Kazuma, uh, from, uh, Redo of oh, Healer. Wasn't no, it Re-Zero. Kazuma and Kaz- Yato and... Um, and uh, Subaru, I um, believe. No, it was no. Uh, uh, Steinsgate. Um, Mayuri. Mayuri. No, Mayuri uh, teamed up with uh, the hentai protagonist. Oh, did with, uh, okay. uh Issei from That High was School. a good episode. Yeah. Go back and listen. So that, we should yeah, that do that fun. again. That, was, that team up was Issei, Mayuri, and then um, Ayn. From Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, my Yuri befriended Ayn. Yeah, I, right. Yeah. I remember which that. Which then all of the harem protagonists would basically let my Yuri win because she's too pure at heart. And, and they protected her. Protected her, which is how she ended up with an and S tier with Ayn. We've Ayn. seen so many new anime since then. We need to do a new one. We should these. do a new one. Well, we have think, more technology. Wasn't too. there someone else that was in that group because she had like big breasts or something? And Issei would be like, yeah, you're, you're <laughs> up here. Get up here. I think so, It was yeah. legit the character from Redo of Healer. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Because he had a thing for women with big breasts. Mm-hmm. Or was it Issei from... No, it wasn't. Redo of Healer wasn't out that time. Oh, yeah, okay. I, 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 we added him. Did we? Yeah. Pretty sure we did. I know we had Issei in because there because that was my... Because it was question. mainly about power... Wasn't it about powers? Power it was about was? powers. Was power. And yeah. he, had, he has that healing ability where he can do a crap ton of stuff. With I know that Issei paired up with another dude because they were like... They would be bros. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. We're Go back and to, listen to we're that. We're gonna have to watch our rewatch our episode. We're at least gonna have to see the end result. Yeah, and then we will have to redo it. Yeah, we need to do a new tier list, the uh, power scaling tier list of <clears throat> anime. That was a characters. fun episode. That was that fun. was fun. But now that we're done reminiscing, um, <laughs> stay tuned for more tier list. Let tier us know list. in the comments. Send us an email at askbakataka at gmail dot com. Yeah, that Hunger would Games be would fun. Be good, like, me and uh, Weez one day we did a Hunger Game thing, and it was for great. Fun. Yeah, it was amazing. Those Hunger Games are funny to watch if you get the right character. If you get the Kazuma right character got them. to the very end and then like fell in a hole and died. Kazuma and Subaru like teamed up until the end. <laughs> they did. That was Subaru amazing. won. He like who was it? It was like a it was either a president or it was a world. It was either a dictator like president or something. <laughs> yeah, and he like ended up firebombing them. Yeah, wasn't it Kim Jong Un? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. Oh. <laughs> it was. He firebombed oh, him at the last one. And then didn't he die because I feel like he got Kim, stung by bees? I yeah. feel like King Jong Un, yeah, he like fell out of a tree. Who pushed uh, Baby Yoda into the pit of spikes? <laughs> oh, that was, um. Oh, who was that? He saved that and like showed everyone. It was amazing. Wasn't that like Abraham Lincoln or something? Yeah, Abraham Lincoln pushed Baby Yoda into the pit of spikes. <laughs> Those are great. We need to do more Dude, of these. We, that was like the this best This would be matchup. great because we can do an audio version where we just talk about it and we, we can do video. U- yeah, we should do that as a YouTube series. Yeah. yeah. Just do tier... Or we should do random tier lists. Yeah. And we should do just like Hunger Games. Yeah. yeah. And we, we should take them. like a... And we, should we take two take, animes. And we can yeah. take a and request matches. from the fans. Hint, yeah. Hint. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Then we like... And then we should put fans in the Hunger Games. Yeah. Yeah. The well, one this fan uh, died from starvation on the first night. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> get a better life, nerd. <laughs> That's uh, why we get sponsored. Like, by the way, do you know that to prevent a situation like this, you can go to this place and buy some MREs in case of... <laughs> Oh, and then we can get like we can get advertisements from like Raid Shadow Legends, and then yeah. put them in the Hunger Games. <laughs> Let's go. See how long the raid. Dude, the skeleton man lost like second round week. <laughs> he should upgrade using Raid, raid Shadow, Shadow Legends. Legends. Sign up now, and you get. Uh, I might edit this part out, but I legit am thinking about cutting this from the podcast just in case somebody <laughs> steals this. <laughs> I don't do know this. what part I'm going to edit out. This part idea. or the no, idea it's okay. part? This is, this is fine because we have proof that we thought of it first. That's exactly. true. Yes. And we'll do it. Note here from the notary. I am a notary. Totally a notary. Yes. Yes. You this work is at a bank. This has been yes. notarized. Stamp. <laughs> 
So stay tuned for that. Listen to our whatever. Check out our YouTube yeah. Yeah, and and yeah, let us know fun. if you want more think, of that kind of. Just content. to think that whole rant, that fifteen minute rant, lasted from me saying I watched My Hero Academia. Yeah. And not only that, but now we got a cool idea. We, we do. do. But anyways, um, we also need a. We also need to do our anime about the vampires that race at night. <laughs> yes. yes, I was legit thinking about that too. I have some more story ideas, and I'm gonna have to think to remember them again. Just type it all out. Just get a notebook. Just I meant to out. type it out, but I was in the middle of work. Mm. Like I was le- legit just wrenching on like one of the units I was yeah. working on. I just thought of it, and I didn't have anything to write it down. You just gotta open. Notes start writing go to, like, inside of the unit. Stop. I just etch it into the side <laughs> of the into unit. The and you're like, I gotta track this customer down. My greatest Somebody. ideas in this unit. <laughs> Somebody gets it back. It's like vampires in blood powered cars and the guy's like oh dude like what? keeps turning the pump and is like this is a pretty good story <laughs> it's just like a legit playing? a whole script just written on it he just a... keeps buying more pumps i want to see what happens next <laughs> there's a link at the bottom he's like oh, go here to find out more <laughs> it ends up being a rigmarole <laughs> let's go no it's just the meme of the gandalf to the trumpet thing just a meh <laughs> Weez, what did you do? What did you watch? I watched the episode two of Breaking Bad. I watched. He's learning how to make meth. Nice. I did learn how to make meth. We can market this. Yes, you have to take this the the one compound yeah. that's the inverse of the other one, and it makes meth or something. How do you make compound V? I don't know. Make compound V right now. I'll figure it out. It is the blood of children. Boom understands it. I it's a. a it's a decent show, I guess. It was kind of funny. They like dissolved a body in a bathtub and then it fell through the oh, floor. Oh, I know how to do that. The bathtub did? Yeah, he's like, you need this plastic bucket for the to dissolve this body in these like acids. And then uh, later he's like he's like smoking and stuff and he's high. And then he's just like, I'll just put him in the bathtub. So he puts him in the bathtub, puts the the uh, chemicals on him so it'll melt and he's like that when um Walter comes back to his house, he's like, "Yeah, I don't know why you're telling me to get this stupid plastic tub when I have a perfectly good bathtub upstairs." And he's like, "Oh no!" And then it just all these guts just like fall oh. from the ceiling and land in his living room, and he's like, "That's why." And then that was the end of the episode. Because the Wal- Walter character, he's a ex chemistry teacher, isn't he? Yeah, he's a chemistry. So like, teacher. he knows how to like make meth and do all yeah. this crazy stuff. He's actually a current chemistry right at the um beginning and he's just story. trying to get money to cure his cancer right like that's yeah, a basic I, I think the the basic thing is he's kind of a loser like like his life is fine but there's nothing exciting he's everything's kind of stale like his his relationship with his wife is yeah. stale like his his whole like teaching is stale everything's kind of just like whatever and so my life currently so <laughs> once he gets he finds out oh, he, has he has cancer oh wow once he finds out he has cancer, it's kind of like something kind of clicks with him of like, I'm not going to live that much longer. So he eventually gets in this situation where he's like, I can help you. Like we can sell meth together and then we'll, I can make a ton of money. I think his goal is just to become super rich and then like help his wife after he dies and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So just like might as well do something. I mean, it's it not exactly explained yeah. like his motivations. Okay. Yet from the first two episodes but i just know it from the meme where he's just like say my name <laughs> yeah um the my one thing i noticed in watching a live action show is which is something you probably haven't done in a while. i haven't i haven't watched that many live action shows in general especially more like mature ones i've never really seen that much yeah it's mainly like disney ones. yeah like i just watched a bunch of, i've seen a bunch of disney and like star wars shows and stuff it's only a thing i really cared about but it's like i'll try breaking bad and it's fine one thing is like there's like gore and violence and stuff but it's like in anime, I can buy it so much easier because everything is stylized. In mm-hmm. live action, it's just like you see this like bloody corpse like thing fall through the roof, and you're just kind of like, "That's red dye. That's prosthetic effects and yeah, stuff." Like yeah. it's just it's so obviously fake. Which it's not like I want to really see like something horribly graphic on like actual body or whatever, but like. I don't know. It's just you can kind of tell it's fake and it kind of takes you out of it a little bit, especially that show, which is like 
2008 or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I don't know. There's something about like in the show, I can tell these are actors on a set yeah. with a camera filming them. And it's still a good, like it's well made, but um, it, there's something about anime and just animation in general where you're so engrossed in the world because it's literally, that's all there is. There is yep. no hidden props or anything that they're trying to do to like do things that they can't actually do, you know? Like, well, if it's done right, it feels like their world, like a different realm yeah. than ours. And then like in action and fighting and stuff, like you can't actually just kick someone and break their leg on, you know, on mm-hmm. a set or whatever. Yeah. Whereas in animation, you're animating the impact of like, you know, their foot hits here, it snaps their leg or whatever. Well, like in the most recent episode of Dororo that we just watched. Yeah. We watched Hakimaru just like de So brutal. People. Yeah. Dude, and it was... And like, it was oh. You you felt it. Yeah. yeah. And then like that one character that got shot in the head by an mm-hmm. arrow. Yeah. It was like, dude, you hear the thud. And you're yeah. like, dang. It's dead. like the thing in um the Obi-Wan TV show. There's like a part where he's fighting stormtroopers and he just kind of like slashes across their chest yeah. and they die or whatever. Yeah. And like you don't see a cut or anything, which it's like, I understand this is just like I, I think the reason they did that is just because it's easier. Yep. Like you just do that and then they're gone. Yeah. Which is weird because it's not like they were censoring it because there's a part where a stormtrooper gets cut in half by a freaking laser like yeah. thread thing. And it was like, dang, that was intense. Why are the lightsabers used like baseball bats when like they showed that already? That was my biggest complaint. Because there was like one scene where Obi-Wan like literally like just bashes his lightsaber against a stormtrooper's yeah. chest. And I'm like I played the Force Unleashed too. Yeah, he would be cut in half. And it's like, that's one thing that I really liked about the CGI and uh, the prequels is like when Yoda and Obi Wan fight the clones in that one scene. They actually like they're cutting off their limbs yeah. and stuff because it's so much easier with CGI to do that than yep. it is with uh, practical like live action stuff. But um, it's also like the saying that I've heard so many times from people is in live action when the Say if the main character of Breaking Bad just died. Yeah. Right? You would see him in another show. You mm-hmm. would see that yeah. guy in the no- another show. It was like what we were talking what we we're gonna talk about later on the podcast yeah. with Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. He died oh, as yeah. Iron Man, but then you see him in Doolittle. Yeah. He's still Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. That's but in like anime. Action, uh, yeah. But in anime, when I don't know, Levi from Attack on Titan, he dies or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Like he's dead. Mm-hmm. You don't see him again unless yeah. you go rewatch the show. He's dead. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, they can they bring back characters back to life yeah. like any other show. But a lot of times, if a character dies, they're dead. You, yeah, you never see him again. Because it's that specific design yeah. of that like person is just gone. Yeah. That's why I like um with that one actor that they had in the Batman, uh, where they put so much prosthetics on him, it doesn't even look remotely like the oh, actor that it the is. The guy that did the penguin. Yeah, that's great. I, it's crazy. I I've I didn't stared at both was. pictures. Yeah, I've stared at both pictures. I'm like, how the heck are? And they then the you see person? them. You see the like makeup artist put the, the prosthetics on. You're like, holy crap, yeah. that's insane. But yeah, there's there is things like that, and some actors are so recognizable. Just you see their face, and you just like, yeah. I know who this person is. It's hard to d- distance yourself from them in other works. Voice acting, like sometimes I'll hear a voice, and it's like, oh, that's really recognizable. That's definitely this person, and it can take you out, but not as much as like seeing the face of the person. And that draws me out of a show, especially anime, more in dubs than it does yeah. in subs. Like, I can recognize, like, the, say, the voice of Dio or something like yeah. that. And it's like, oh, that's the same guy that plays Dio. Yeah. He's still changing his voice and yeah. the way he talks enough mm-hmm. to make it different. That's true. But then yeah. you have, like, I, I'm rewatching My Hero Academia in dub. Mm-hmm. So many of the voice actors from that are in every other dubbed anime. Yeah. Because it's a Funimation cast. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, that's the same character that plays in, like, Kill a Kill. Yeah. Or something like that. And, it, and a lot of times, it's not just the them changing their voice. It's just the the inflection they use you can just tell like you can hear lines from like um light yagami or okabe yeah as the same voice and you just hear the line for each person and you can just instantly tell like you know right. this is him talking it's the attitude they put behind it yeah, yeah. i think my favorite they uh, really are actors like my favorite english dub actor is the guy who plays um he plays the main character of a tokyo ghoul in the dub okay and he also okay. plays uh the main character for Kodawa Zombie Dezuka. Yeah. But like, he also plays in other things, like inside characters. 
Now he he's played as many dark. He's played like like dark villain once. Yeah. I didn't know it was a villain until like he actually messed up a voice line. I don't know if they didn't redo it or not, but it was yeah. enough to I was like, that's that guy. Yeah. I didn't even like, I didn't even know he played in uh, Cordoba Zombie de Suka. So I looked through like the uh Yeah, read that's the always impressive. Like yeah, I, I don't know. I like it when people take pride in their job. Like I want to make this character yeah. sound different. It's like how Levi and Yato in Japanese are the same mm -hmm. uh, voice actors, and they're like the way they talk is so different. Yeah. Also, Aaron Yeager's voice actor is Yukine, and like in as Yukine, he's just this annoying like you know kid. Yeah. And as Aaron, he's like such a different person. Yeah. It's insane, like how different. Dude. His voice this guy you're talking about, Austin, um, yeah, Tittle, yeah, he does he does a character called um, Accelerator from the certain magical series. Yeah, oh nice, like, that's cool. But you, you can't really even tell because he just uh, just some he knows how to change his voice, like he does, the attitude of yeah, yeah, Sama, Attack on Titan. I think dubs in general are kind of mediocre, but there's certain voice actors that are just really good. And whenever you hear them, you're like, okay, this is actually a good voice well, actor. I think the biggest issue is that a lot of them, they're not, I feel like they need to open more up yeah, to the they public. Because like Japan, they have open sessions as well. Yeah. Where uh, they let people audition. Because Japan, they treat part. it like it's a movie. Like yeah. you, you audition for your part. You're like, you know, there's like big names, of course. Yeah, but whatever. then like in, uh, here in America, it's like, yeah, we have this set of yeah. voice actors, and we're just gonna throw we're it gonna in where we you. think we're gonna be the best. Yeah. So I understand why some people don't have pride in that because they don't really yeah. uh, want to be there sometimes. That's cool. And just they, if they have a bigger range of people, then there's more likely it'll they'll have a better person that they'll choose. Yeah. Also, it's I never blame voice actors for being bad in their part. It is down to well, the, the casting. Direction. Yeah. yeah. It's casting the director and the casting director that screwed up because they put someone that wasn't fit for a role in yeah. the role. Like if you're a voice actor and you suck and you get a big time job, do it because like, you know, it's your job. Just Yeah. You know. The only time I will blame a voice actor is if I know for a fact that, that they just didn't care. Yeah. That they mm -hmm. didn't put any effort into it. And you can hear and that. Even in their then voice. it's yeah. usually like the director should get them into it like to yeah for sure the director should like either motivate or rise this person yeah. isn't going to be fit for this role change about yeah put them in a different role or just do the hard choice of firing them. well it's only yeah. gonna take like 30 minutes of yeah you uh, don't sound enthused at all are you okay you need yeah. something to talk about or should we just get you out of here yeah and like, even if uh, you're too is far is it in. gonna take like another zero on the paycheck to put a little pep in that step or yeah, yeah. i can add 50 cents of it <laughs> Yeah, even if they're like a it's too taco. far <laughs> into the process to stop, mm -hmm. they can still they still got to do tell them like okay, see it with this kind of inflection or whatever. Get it? Yeah. Get more takes. Meanwhile, Dio's like, uh, not Dio. Uh, the guy who plays Rosewald. Duh, Duh. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. he also play Dio? He does. Yeah. Yeah, and he like it completely changed. Yeah, he is very that that guy plays a lot of people. His voice is very recognizable, but. He also plays one of the random soldier guys in like Overlord. He mm -hmm. plays a bunch of side characters. That's he's, cool. He's got a great voice. I like it when there's actors that like don't mind playing side characters. Yeah. Uh, despite having like big roles because mm -hmm. it just shows that, you know, they're just having fun. Yeah. Yeah, it is cool. Also, voice actors tend to get that a lot more than other actors. Yeah. Where it's just like you you get to play random villager number five and this person and this person. It's like it's all cool. right voice actors generally have a huge range of like characters they get mm -hmm. to play more than regular like uh, live action actors yeah 90 percent of the time i'm jealous of voice actors because their voice range is yeah insane and what they can do with their voice to forcefully change it into what they want it to be is crazy yeah mm -hmm. i wish i had 10 percent of their ability just to make my voice sound better on the yeah <laughs> just practice like they go through such insane practice and mm -hmm. training to I don't to even know level. where to start practicing basically uh, like, there's people that have like um I think the guy who voices Spike actually has like a voice acting like class thing that oh like can, a master class yeah, for me okay. personally uh, the best way I would say to do is like find a character you want to replicate remember the voice lines well, it's and not do your even, best like okay it's not even so much wanting to replicate a certain character no i'm saying like you can start off oh, that way i mean yeah you could for like actual voice acting mm -hmm. but i'm talking like how they can adjust their mannerisms their mannerism yeah their their tone mm -hmm. 
their inflection of their voice, even down to like the the pitch levels yeah. of yeah. certain points in their voice where they can take their lows and turn them higher. They can take their highs and turn them lower and yeah. they can do in between. And it's not even so much making them sound like Mickey Mouse or something. Yeah. It's just... It's, it's the like, actual it's acting auto, of it. It's an auto EQ that they can do with their voice. Yeah. It's like going from where, this to going like this. Yeah. Where I can make... Well, I can well, try to well. like do my voice really low. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. But like... They can make it actually sound good, yeah. Instead of like a crappy like low voice. Or yeah, because some of them even they even if they can't make like change their voice, they're just good at acting. So yeah. They, yeah. they just use their voice and they're that you know they're just yeah. good at acting. And it's just it's cool to see them do it. And I wish I I want to practice to get it yeah to that point. But there's like the guy who voices Obi Wan Kenobi in the like Clone Wars show also has this really like deep voice and these kind of like over the top villain like voices and stuff he's this like tiny five foot nine like really thin guy right so if he was in like live action stuff you'd never get cast in those roles because he doesn't fit it physically yeah. but for his voice acting he can play these crazy over the top like villain voices and right he's the uh He's the guy on Fox that's like coming up next on Fox. Oh, really? Yeah, he does that oh, that's voice. Cool. And he's also Obi Wan. And like, that's he's also um, a Johnny Test. Oh, really? So, like, really? he's got such an insane range that's of cool. voices that like he gets to play this really shrimpy kid and also gets this like big announcer, like, kind of. Yeah. And then voice. he gets like a really elegant, like, yeah. And then he gets like Obi Wan. Yeah. Like, it's, it's crazy what they can do. Yeah. It's cool. It is super cool. Good voice actors are really good, which is why I wish people like that they would put into the dubs and like open yeah. cast yeah. it like it was a normal like TV show because anime is getting popular enough where it's getting to that point yeah. where you should have like Demon Slayer so big, you should have big voice actors yeah. voicing them. Yeah, for sure. I do also think it's harder to voice anime in general because of how you have to match the lip flaps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to continue this conversation, but real quick, we're going to do a spot for our sponsors. Sponsor so, break. Yeah. Sponsor break. Hear from Let's us go. in like a minute and a half. Yeah. <laughs> At time. But you know, so anyway, I got a parking ticket. The guy got punched, but at the end of the day, everyone went home happy. It was a good time. That was a really, really How long many story. times do I have to tell you to stop telling us a story about the time you went to church? Hey, it's not my fault, okay? I didn't know that they would have parking meters at a church, nor did I know that the pastor would be so... That wasn't a church. That was the cult. The church was next door to the cult. I can't tell the difference. They both worship something. (laughs) In all honesty, though, having a cult where the meetings are exactly an hour long, but then having half an hour meters sounds amazing. (laughs) Can we do that? Yes. Then when you're the like the the cult leader or whatever and you're like teaching the congregation or whatever, you can just be like, if you leave right now, you're going straight to hell. Right to the bottom. And then all the people that are about to leave, that's like, oh crap, my meter are just like, I don't want to go to hell. (laughs) Do you want your car or do you want eternal redemption? (laughs) That's what Andrew Tate should have done. With like everything else, he should have had like a chapel. Dude, like, he should have the parking meter. And then, yeah. yeah. Here's the thing, though. He's not done yet, though. Oh, that's, that's true. true. You just gave him the idea <laughs> to the holy Tate Paul. chapel. <laughs> oh, dang. And, oh, dang. Weezer's going to be their number one member. It won't be a chapel. It's going to be a giant pyramid <laughs> with him at the top. <laughs> yeah. The, the church is going to be called Ponzi Scheme. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be like, "Look, no, I'm not the Illuminati. I am above the Illuminati. That's why I control. The that's Illuminati. why I'm standing on top of the Triangle Peak instead yeah. of flattening it out." Have you guys that. ever seen the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid? No, I know what Bass Pro Shop is, but I have not seen the pyramid. You've never seen the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid? No. Okay, we might edit this part up. I'm gonna look it up. You guys keep talking. Okay. Okay. What do we talk about, Pyrolis, after well, you said my real name and Boom has to edit it out? Hey, it's fine. I only said uh, part of it. I only said corn. Yeah. Corn. I only said corn. Okay. Um, anyway, They're going to find out my name's Cornelius. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Okay. Hopefully Boom edits out that your name's Cornelius Bivouac. You're, you're, I don't even remember hearing it, so I'm going to have to listen closely. Hey, future me, listen closely. Listen closely. Yeah, very it was, closely. it was just a little bit ago. 
Yeah, it was just a little bit. He of said it. corn. I said corn. Cornelius Beaver Wackway. <laughs> that is oh, exactly no. what I said. But you know, um, I watched. Uh, what did I watch? What did you watch? Have you watched it? Did you? I have watched. You... I I watched one episode of um, OG Sun. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. How yeah. was it? Is it still good? good? It's still good. It's still amazing. Still fantastic. I, I saw a review that was like the. I, I don't know how good the show is because I haven't seen it. Yeah. But I saw this article about it about how like it gets boring or whatever, and I was like, this person, this oh, the, when the article is like, there's not that much action in it, yeah. so it's kind of boring. I'm like, okay, this is this, this is just Dude, a stupid article. So basically, uh, the show is about this guy. I'm like, it's a back. comedy. Well, he can like, show. He's got a magic that can show his um history like his past and stuff yeah and everyone else's past too but he shows his past and like you're going through like the awful in treatment he has received because they thought he was an orc in the other world because yeah. everyone in the other world was beautiful and then oh. he showed up <laughs> and they thought he was some sort of subhuman so they treated him very awfully <laughs> so he's got a book of things that he erased from his memory yeah uh and when he whenever he remembers something he's got to go back in and erase it <laughs> um and he's, he's got like uh, Takafumi, the niece, mm -hmm. the main character of it, not the niece, the net, yeah, the nephew. What yeah. show are you guys talking about? Isekai Oji san. Oh, the nephew, the main character. Mm -hmm. uh, he read the first like sentence of the book and immediately was like, "Please erase my memory." <laughs> <laughs> okay, not to That's interrupt good. you guys. It's interactive time for the podcast. Interactive audience. I want you right now to enter Bass Pro Shop Pyramid. And look at this magnificent Where piece. Is this Memphis? This it, is in Memphis. Wow. Of course, Tennessee is going to have something like this. This thing is That is huge. absurd. Like, what look, is the point of that? I don't know. I feel like that should be like a Jurassic Park exhibit but, where it's just giant fish. How you, guys have, <laughs> you guys have seen that in Evangelion. The main base is a giant pyramid underground. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this is what happens at a Bass Pro Shop in the future when no, no, angels no. attack. You see what happens? Not angels are going to attack. It's giant fish falling out of the sky like, on human look legs. At this, like, look at this picture lit, lit up. It is full. It's got it's the really Illuminati cool. eye. It is it cool. Does. Like the Illuminati own the Bass Pro Shop. It looks so out of place. <laughs> it, it does. does. Who thought of this? Look, look at the it's inside of this thing. I it's oh got an internal goodness. forest where it's got water and it's got a boat. If you think about See, now that is cool. The fish inside there. Yeah, like if you've cool. ever seen or lived in a house where like you're in the top floor and the roof is like on a freaking annoying angle. Like, yeah. you know, this is a really stupid idea. I hate like I have put in cathedral like ceilings and yes, it is it like is. a triangle is such an awful like Thing to be in because at least use the space that you've the, created the corners are going to be awkward because yeah, it's on yeah. a weird angle yeah. like you're the square that you're going to be using could like chop off so much of the triangle to make it this better. thing is it so huge cool, it has giant log so cabins weird. inside of the bass Pro. well you can make an obtuse triangle yeah like you could make a like if you, you could mean, make a weird looking building that's a look more practical. at the top yeah. of this thing there's so much wasted space that's so stupid like it's like a giant insane. tent it's a village with water canals see inside if you of spent it. the amount of money that it took to make that and just made like a skyscraper kind of building you would have you could have levels of fish yeah but then you wouldn't have the best pro shop period i guess it's oh, it's kind of cool but i don't know it looks a little lame on the inside though like the inside it of does. the pyramid is just like the. i kind of wish they would have went with like that high tech techno like dystopian yeah i want to see look. a robo fish yeah if they cool. actually put like rooms and stuff in it it would be more interesting like each room is a different ecosystem or habitat with fish oh, yeah. and it has like guides on how to catch each fish i would look much prefer that yeah, that's okay here's a here's a good this is the one i know of from the reddit um man it's so Eagle weird buildings. it's the world's seventh largest pyramid yeah bruh eight so the title of the Reddit post is World's we, Seventh Largest Pyramid, aka Bass Pro Shop in Memphis. We don't have to. It's go under to, the R slash Evil Building subreddit. I know. We don't have to go to freaking. Um, it's also in mildly Evangelion, but <laughs> we don't have to go to freaking Egypt. You just got to go to Memphis, Tennessee. I bet you the pyramid top is a secret rocket ship. 
It looks like it. It looks like it's going to shoot off and just become like a yacht that's going to get in the oh, water. Oh, it looks just... like it's going to shoot off and just grow a second pyramid base. <laughs> <laughs> like so you can see that that's actually a um, balcony. A yeah. balcony. Yeah. Which, actually, that's kind of cool. I could see an action scene where you slide down because this is all glass. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't trust that. I feel like I'd stand on that and be like, Mm, we this need, might break. We need to make a pointless like action movie with a random plot where it's like we have to go to the Bass Pro Shop because of a terrorist or something, Heck and then yeah. it's like he's on the thing. Someone shoots a missile. He's gonna like slide. No, down you terrorist shooting. fish, leave yeah. them alone. No. Yeah, they're trying to poison the fish at the Bass Pro Shop. Oh no! It's just because of course actual... that would be the plot. Yeah, for sure. It's a yes. walking fish that's trying to destroy <laughs> yeah, the no. pyramid because of the harm it's done to its brethren. So that way we can have an Egyptian reference in it because of the Bass Pro Pyramid. Exactly. We have to have the president. I think there's presidents in Egypt. The president, yeah, president of, Egypt. of Egypt. He stored his presidential fish in the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee. And there's terrorists trying to poison it. No, they're trying to kidnap so, it for ransom. Yeah, they kidnap it to blackmail the president of yeah. Egypt. <laughs> just these overly complicated, like, yes. strings of thought that just make no sense. This is slowly not turn. This is slowly turning from an anime podcast can, to just a here's a cool here's idea. A story podcast. idea. We're okay. We're gonna add this into the vampire like racing show. There's just gonna be this random arc that's like an action. They have movie. to drive up the pyramid. <laughs> yes. 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 Every cool race they car scene has to drive up it and then jump it. Yeah. Or one car has to drive up it and then it's gonna get shot with a rocket. So he jumps out of the car, slides down the pyramid as the car car gets shot it's in, in another character. car yeah he kicks, he kicks someone out of their car and drives away yes oh my goodness it's just, it's just gonna be constant like cool action things. this scene is gonna take five years to animate yeah, there's gonna, gonna be, be worth five it. cars and each one is gonna do something with a pyramid yes. it's gonna be cool in its own unique way one drives into it and like yeah has to like dodge through the building one drives and... up it one has to jump out of the car yeah it's going to be great. One jumps over it because a helicopter launched him into the air. And then we get a really good excuse. Be like, hey, uh, we need to have VIP access to your pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen a watch. Also, for uh, certain reasons, we need to slide down your uh, pyramid. <laughs> yeah. right, we're going to shoot a rocket. Please don't be alarmed. <laughs> How do you feel about automotive vehicles through the front door? <laughs> Would you be okay if I had a helicopter and I crashed it into the side of your building. <laughs> uh, how are the vampires going to get from Tokyo? Would you be okay if I introduced to Memphis, Tennessee? Okay, this Would you be okay if I introduced the a race of vampires into your... <laughs> this is going to be the movie where it it did barely connects it all to the main series. It just right. a random thing We have happens. the whole series, but then it's like vampire racers in... Texas, yeah. and then they They're end up in Tennessee like, somehow. Please, main character, you can't beat him. His mother has cancer. <laughs> if he cared, he would fight harder. <laughs> <laughs> then we're just gonna be like Tom Cruise, go jump down the pyramid. Hey, that's how we don't have to voice act our anime at all. We just have all the lines <laughs> from Speed Racer. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be great. This yeah. is gonna be great. Can't wait for this to come out in 25 years. Hey. In the future, technology is going to be so advanced, we can make high quality movies for like super cheap and easy. Oh, yeah. And these, like, there's going to be all this garbage coming out. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. That's kind of already happening. Yep. Because of, I don't know, Adobe Premiere and stuff. <laughs> Not Adobe. Yep. Um, we're going to have computer What's the video programs? editing software? That's Camp, like... There's Camtasia, if you're talking about that. No, I'm not talking about the weird ones, the offshoot ones. I'm talking like the main one that's like super easy to use now. Is it Adobe? Mm, yeah, Might I think be Adobe. So. The one that has a whole suite of things that you have to pay like $1,000. Yeah, Adobe's Adobe. Yeah, Adobe. Yeah, in the future, it's going to be like, I'm just going to put this thing with like green screen and not i'm gonna wave this into, tool on the screen into uh, an iMovie and then they're gonna be like is this an action movie a drama it's like this is an action movie it's like okay editing done movie and then you just <laughs> watch and you're like yeah it's pretty good and send it off sounds like that um what do they call that the ai where you can make pictures now yeah what is it called uh 
Stop. Oh, Ouch. there's an AI where you can make magic cards. It's super oh, really? cool. Yeah, oh, it'll make cool. like a random generated magic card. Huh. Sweet. Or uh, just like a random name. So before we get on our offshoot about the magnificence that is the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid, yes, um, we were talking about voice actors, and I wanted to talk a little bit, because we mentioned it before the podcast, about actors, and we mentioned oh. it a little bit. Yeah, how live, how I believe that live action anything sucks because of the person's in that role for too long, people only associate them with him. And you specifically mentioned Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr., and then there's Hugh Jackman. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, Hugh Jackman's one as well, because like before their roles in the Marvel universe got really big. Like uh, Robert Downey Jr. played in a bunch of things like Sherlock. Yeah. Uh, he played in, what was it? The trop tropical heat. Well, I think like the only actor that has been able to successfully be a character uh, and be anyone else. And I know the reason why, but it's Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. And that's because Deadpool wears a mask. So but you more also, associate the voice with it than you do the face. But also Deadpool in the comics itself is mm. basically made out to be Ryan Reynolds. In the comics, he says Deadpool tells his comic writers mm. that if they make a movie about him, Ryan Reynolds has to act him. Okay. That's partially why characters like The Mandalorian are so compelling because he's yeah. always behind a mask. So like the Well, physical... until like season three. Well, yeah, but he only takes it off for a little while. Like you you barely For the see robot, because the robot's like, I'm not a human. I can help him. He's like Ooh, yeah. he makes a fine argument. And then he takes it off for, like, Baby Yoda at one scene. But, like, for the most part, he has it on. Yeah. So it's just the physical acting. You don't think of Pedro Pascal's face when you think of the Mandalorian. You just think of the helmet. Yeah. I just love how his reaction when he saw the other Mandalorians take their helmet off. No issue. He's like, go, do I go for the blaster against these There's a There's or? a trailer for season three. And it's, like, in the trailer... Uh, the one oh, I don't remember her name. The red-haired Mandalorian, mm. uh, who's like the leader. Yeah, oh, the main uh, black saber. Um, we know you're talking what's about. Her name? Proceed. Yeah. Anyways, she mentions like uh, she's talking to Mando, and she's like, "Your cult kind of like screwed us over." Yeah. <laughs> well, because his cult came from the Night Watch. Yeah, like the Death Watch and stuff. Yeah, They're like the extremist, like crazy Mandalorian. Like, which is crazy to think that. Mandalorians if, are so cool. They're so diverse and like. Do you know anything about like their their legends lore and stuff? A like the Mandalorian wars and stuff. Yeah, just a little bit. Like, I know they are so cool. Yeah, and like the Clone Wars references it a lot. Yeah, like, and uh, Rebels does. They yeah. go to that one area where it's like they were all. all I think they were fighting Jedi or something. Yeah, it was just like the whole area was like destroyed and. Yeah, it, it's so cool. Like, um, in Knights of the Old Republic specifically one in well there's only one and two but yeah in knights of the old, old republic there's malachor five and mm -hmm. literally like they basically had to blow up a planet just to stop the mandalorian yeah and like the sith and stuff it's, it's have you seen the new uh mandalorian season three trailer i have not there's a scene where he's like going into mandalore and you see just like this ruined like huge area it's I super cool i always want to see mandalore as like a live action yeah movie. because mandalorians are so over the top that they literally use nuclear weapons against yeah. each other and they just decimated their it, mandalore is like history is just like they fought each other they fought jedi now they're fighting the empire yeah. they just like they fought the separatists they fought they fought themselves then there's like in clone wars era they're it's like trying to be peaceful but they're still like sex that are just like what yeah. the heck no war. are mandalorians just american <laughs> yeah basically basically yeah. like we're gonna try to be peaceful and then all the people are like they're no, actually war. a lot like american ideas too because like Anybody can be a Mandalorian. Yeah. yeah. You just have to join up with them. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like how anybody can be American. Oh, you have just a have to... weapon that can block my lasers? Shame. Guess I'll start using real guns then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they actually, in the Old Republic, mm -hmm. like books and stuff, they're actually like that. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, I know. That's these what freaking joke. Jedi can block our blasters. Well, time to pull out the shotgun. Yeah. Take this, you Jedi scum. <laughs> they're awesome. Mm -hmm. Mandalorian's a good show. But yeah, back to the idea of I agree with Pyrolus that I don't know. There's just too many. There's too many series nowadays that mm -hmm. use the same cast of actors mm -hmm. that you can't watch them in any other, any other role. Yeah, you have the same problem almost with like 
TV series like Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. Like you see characters mm -hmm. from them and all you think is like, oh, that's a character from Stranger Things. Yeah. Or... Well, it's like shows, especially TV shows have a big issue with this when they start out with uh, kids. Yeah. The kids age during mm -hmm. production and everything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then production takes forever to yeah. do. Like the, I think there are some cases where they come back and the kid's like, well, it's been three years. The kid definitely looks older. What yeah. do we do here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What's well, like Stranger Things is actually running into that because a lot of the kids that were like originally like 12 mm -hmm. are now like almost 18 years old. Yeah, yeah. And they're and supposed they're, to like 14 or something. Yeah, they're supposed to only be 14. Mm -hmm. So it's like that's one thing that animation has way over anything live action will ever be. Yeah. Once you draw a character, it has a distinct art style. Mm -hmm. And yeah, in anime, you can argue that if you take out like the eyes and the hair, it's all got the same shape. Right? <laughs> yeah. But like the way their mannerisms is they animate the characters, how they mm -hmm. animate them, how mm -hmm. they move, how they act. It's a it's a distinct character. Well, and then if you kill that character off, they're gone. Yeah. The or if they with, leave the show, they're gone. Mm -hmm. Your argument with the whole, yeah, if you take off the hair and stuff, they're the same. Not in every anime. If it's a really good anime, like ReZero, for example, the face structures are different. There that are... is true. There's animes that do that, especially like trigger animations. Yeah. They do that a lot where yeah. everybody has their own face shape. Which I like because like bodies, the body shapes are different. The faces are different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like you can tell everyone is different in any aspect that they can. There do. are just different art styles, too, depending yeah. on which show you watch and stuff. Oh, yeah. So like it's both, really both cool. Very unique to see um, people will do edits of like one character. They'll take like, say one character from Naruto and then they'll just do the animation styles of all like different bunch of anime. Yeah. Like they'll do like attack on Titan and death. No, yeah. and like Hunter X Hunter and mm -hmm. Jojo and stuff. It's cool to see how they would look and how different they do look in each different. Yeah. Film. Um, I know they did one with, um, they do it with a lot of those high school slice of life shows a lot. Like yeah. They do have, uh, Kaguya Sama. They do. Because a lot that. of those shows, they try to make everything, everyone look cute. And yeah. so the way that they do it is they make them look very simple. Yeah. There's not like a lot of wrinkles or well, like. Very rounded edges. Yeah. Like kind and of so big it, proportions. It, so for those characters, they're usually pretty simple. But when you get into like Attack on Titan and stuff and shows that are trying to be more serious and they try to look more like distressed and stuff, yeah. they always put like tons of shading and like all kinds of Especially stuff. Especially during season four. Yeah. And just so the close up scenes of like the horror shock face and they're like, eh, or like the big eye like uh, yeah. angle that they always do. Oh, that's I've seen so many jokes where they do like the camera angle where it's like right at the tip of the nose. Yeah. It's showing like the fish eyed like look. It's just like, you know, when the characters lost it, when they show you this. Yeah. <laughs> There's go ahead. Oh, well, I was saying one thing about Isekai Oji san is uh the animation the style they have in there. It's just like in the manga, uh depending on the scene, like the animation style changed a lot, the art style changed a lot depending yeah. on mm -hmm. what the character was doing, like they'd replicate certain things. The animation's also doing that. Okay. And it's amazing. I like the base animation though of that mm -hmm. show. Like it's it kind of reminds me of that fantasy Isekai. But it is so much the eyes and like the the facial structures mm -hmm. are really different than what I've seen a lot of times. Yeah, in those shows. Yeah, like it has, especially the the uncle. He has that almost like ugly b word character. He's supposed to, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, like all the other characters are have like that like really like isekai look to them, like the elves and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's cool. It's cool. I love animation because everything that you see is painstakingly put there like yeah. there's nothing that's just we're in a room this is the location we shoot it at so there are things around you, us. you like, say you don't randomly have a starbucks coffee on the <laughs> set of game of thrones yes <laughs> like everything is so meticulously because everything has to be drawn so it's yeah. like every frame is is there like every chair and whatever is drawn by somebody that has to like put it there have you it's seen not just it random. where anime does do product placement though mm -hmm yeah the biggest one is pizza huts <laughs> <laughs> for some reason pizza Hut will that. put pl there product some... placement there's always a, there's a really funny one from certain magical index yeah where they just randomly meet up at a pizza hut <laughs> for no apparent reason there was a um i think there's a pro d pro zd skit where it is like a product placement and it was like oh hey we're going to a restaurant but it's gonna be pizza hut and it's yeah. like look at this thing where we're gonna eat at pizza hut it's just a weird thing that for some reason 
Pizza Hut really likes guess, to put their restaurants in yeah, anime. I guess they sponsor them. That's kind of yeah. funny. You can't out I mean, Pizza the Hut. You can't. I think it would be... Papa it, John's tried. Ideally, what can. you do is you get rights to, to like product place everything so then when they walk down a street it's just a normal street with a mcdonald's and a pizza hut and whatever like not only that would be perfect that would be cool papa john's die but you know they're trying to revive themselves really how they're trying to make a pizza bowl which is a pizza bowl so hear me out right it's pizza yeah no crust (laughs) in a bowl isn't so, that just a pasta it, salad? It's, no, it's, it's like basically spaghetti, pasta. No, it's right? basically a keto bowl. It's basically because it's just yeah. cheese, <laughs> the sauce, and then the toppings in which that you choose. Awful. That kind of sounds like uh, Subway's protein bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where they just take basically their meat proportions, put it in a bowl, and then they like, say like you, can put, they, yeah. you can put your veggies well, on the at, protein At least bowl. basically a salad. This is just cheese, sauce, and whatever el- other toppings you have chosen. That's how they're trying to revive their legacy. Yeah, yeah. It legit sounds like a stoner. One day he looked in his fridge like, I'm going to make a pizza. Well, it's called a keto. I don't got any it, It's called a keto pizza is what yeah. it is because people on the keto diet can't eat yeah. bread. So I ate them for a little bit because uh, when I was on my, when I put myself on like my very strict like three month diet, yeah. um, I ate as little bread as possible. So my mama made yeah. this and it wasn't the greatest definitely prefer the actual pizza i feel like pizza is one of the things where it's like if you're not gonna eat bread just maybe not yeah eat I, pizza. i'd rather not eat pizza here's the thing with pizza the bread is important because it absorbs a lot of the flavor yeah especially for me i love stuffed like, crust pizza i feel like you can eat a burger with just like lettuce and, and topping. oh it's on. great yeah. i do that all like, the time eat it like you don't have to have the, bread. Have the bread no but like a pizza is the bread that is well the if pizza. you have just a pizza without the the actual bread part you think about it you have you have really rich sauce yep. yeah you have really like really tangy like really rich pepperonis if you have like a basic pepperoni pizza mm-hmm. bowl and then you have really like really flavorful cheese yeah you have like a cheddar and mozzarella cheese which is really high in oh flavor. you're reminding me of that restaurant we ate at with, <laughs> with the goat fat. cheese oh. Oh. but yeah like the bread on that pizza yeah. finished off the taste yeah. because if you would have had just like that blt pizza that we had if we yeah. had just the toppings it would have been a really rich flavored it would have been bad yeah. is what it would have been bad we'd, when i say just rich eating, flavor i just mean like eating alfredo bear. sauce yeah, yeah whatever else you can't take off bread. it wasn't alfredo sauce it was literal mayonnaise you just oh, have yeah. mayonnaise, mayonnaise, mayonnaise. Yeah. it was yeah you can't take off bread and be like this is still a sandwich no <laughs> This is not a song. This is a sandwich. <laughs> Anyways, you can put lettuce and turn it into a wrap, but yeah. you can't like. But I do agree with you. I want to see it. It has to be like one of those comedy animes too, where they get so much product placement that they that can walk down like a nighttime street and everything yeah. is a brand. So that would be online. so great. Product placement, gross ad blocker. That will be thirty nine ninety nine. Oh, it's so funny! In like JoJo, every character is a reference to some like American band. Yeah. So in the Japanese, they say like Aerosmith or whatever, yeah. but in English, they're like um, Aero, uh, like a uh, metal worker or whatever is their like stand name because they're like too afraid to actually put the thing. Yeah. So there's all these like stupidly translated things. It's like uh. <laughs> honestly i don't know the the production of making an anime american ready what their their term for American yeah. ready is bugs me 90 percent of the time yeah because the way they change they change whole lines mm-hmm. they change whole sentence structures sometimes just to make it right for american yeah yeah like, I kind of really just want you just to say the words yeah, that are just, being scripted for you. Like the one thing that they do weirdly is like translating swearing because in Japan, they'll say words that mean you, but it's used in a aggressive, like aggressive, condescending, condescending way. Yeah, yeah. Which is like really impolite. So it'd be very like it's it's, you know, vulgar basically is. But the word just means you. Yeah. So like. They'll translate it anywhere from just like, like a smaller like curse word to just like the f word or whatever. Netflix, I noticed, always translates like the the f word like yeah. constantly. Um, 
Oh, really? It's weird too. Like, like they'll take like the context of the show. Um, they did this in a uh, a Kadima Drive. Yeah, where it's a really dark and gritty show. Lots of blood. Lots of like adult themes. And there's so much swearing in yeah. it. Yeah. And in all actuality, if you watch the sub, it's just like Baka. Yeah. And stuff like that. It's just like. And yeah, it's like Baka. It, the swear words are so different in America than they are in Japan because just like Baka means idiot. So you yeah. could playfully say idiot. But you then can like, playfully say idiot, it, but at the same time, you can also say it in a kind of in like a manner. super. Yeah. So, um, yeah, in JoJo, they tri- Netflix translated the subtitles just like constant swearing oh. because they're, they'll just be like, like, Kassar or whatever, which is like, damn, but they would yeah. just translate it as like, F. And um, there is a really funny scene, though, where uh, Jolene, <laughs> it was like, it was one of the famous scenes from the manga where she just starts doing all of these like um, uh, gestures with her yeah. hands and is like, um, the, the, she's about to fight this guy and she's like american style japan japanese style it's like uh um, um french style and it was like this style of specifically this area all of these mean f you <laughs> <laughs> it was uh... it was such a random like it was the hilarious it's so funny because it, it it was so random the guy is just like you're going down or whatever and then she just says that and then it's like goes That's to great. the next scene ever since we got a uh, jotaro they've been doing things like that <laughs> yeah. love it <laughs> The randomness of the main characters always gets me. And yeah, the randomness is great. It's one of the best parts of JoJo. I don't know. The uh the first season had some randomness as has had some randomness. It did. Well. Especially It was of, definitely um, more serious. He was more of a serious take on the yeah. character. But like, yeah. After Jotaro is just like off. Yeah. Course. There's yeah. After um Especially with the whole thing. It was in season two, right? Just, where he was like yeah. about to fight one of the pillar men and he was just like uh, he's like touch, yeah, or something yeah. like that. Touch you, yeah, touch you. Because he, he like real. does it. He's like, I have a feeling you're not actually that dangerous. So touch you. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what the heck is going on? Yeah, that's great. Also, just like the first scene where he fights a vampire, he just pulls a Tommy gun out of nowhere, yeah, blasts the store to pieces. Never uses, never sees the Tommy gun yeah. ever again yeah. throughout the entire story. Is amazing. Well, I mean, it was 1920s, right? 19, yeah, 1920s yeah, yeah. Uh, New York. Yeah, so it's yeah. like Obviously, he just he jumped just out of the car somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> he just gave it to a random oh, mobster. Like, hey, yo, thanks for the music, pal. Gave it to a random child. Yeah, they grow up to go do good things one day. The characters just randomly doing the weirdest thing is like, yeah, is so great. All right, well, uh, it's one hour has passed. I, I think, think we ran ding out of things to talk dong. about. Uh, yeah, so that was fun. Here's next week. I'm going to be probably be finishing a bunch of anime of the season so we can talk about the entirety of the thing. Is next week when a lot of them are ending? Yes, like Horus Recoil is ending next week. Oh, that's right. Um, It should be. I think it's 12 episodes. I think Maybe it's 13. Made in Abyss know. is ending? Made in Abyss is probably ending. The last episode will probably be out when we oh. record. One show that looks really good I want, I'm going to start watching is the cyberpunk anime. That's oh, coming out. Yeah, it looks yeah. really good. It's a Crunchyroll ex- exclusive, oh, but boy. it looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to check it out. Hopefully it's not like X-Arm or whatever. No, it's actual proper animation. Okay. Because <laughs> that was another Crunchyroll. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> cyberpunk I mean, show. <laughs> Wait, they haven't really done exclusives lately, have they? Was Licorice Recoil uh, exclusive? Technically, it was. I mean, it was, but it wasn't like a Crunchyroll original yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I think the last good good one they did was what? God of It was Tower probably of Tower of God was their best one, which isn't like a big brag. But I know. That show was so was big fine. when it first came out. And now like nobody talks about yeah, it. Yeah. I if It's a show that's like super long. It's like One Piece. So they like the first 12 episodes and they're like wait guys it gets good at chapter 365 yeah. like <laughs> so many people are saying that about the manhwa they're like guys you really have to get in the season two yeah of the manhwa after chapter 200 that's where yeah, the story really it gets starts. really so much better so it's like yeah it probably does get better but like it's you're kinda, hyping it's up- kind of like one piece i really don't want to read up the chapter yeah. 700 like the first the arcs of one piece aren't super good they're just kind of like uh, fine. man that just made that 
is making One Punch Man just said the real story begins now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not watching or reading One Piece to get to the actual story. Man, I'm kinda, sorry. That's kind of like, that would be like George Lucas selling Star <laughs> Wars to Disney and be like, now the story starts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After 40 years of story. Yeah. I'm not doing that. No, it's One Piece is pretty good, but it's it's a bit to get into. Good on you, Weez. The first couple hey, arcs being aren't the, the best. Thanks for being the trooper. What you should do is you should make a synopsis of every hundred chapters. I should, yeah. That way you can like break everything down and summarize everything. That way people that want to watch the okay. real story yeah. so cannot do that. We're going to do this segment on the podcast where you're going to give us a synopsis of every hundred chapters every week. Okay. So that way me and Pyrolis don't have to read. Sounds it. good. Okay. So it starts out with monkey D. Luke. We're not starting not, this not week. Oh, We're starting okay. next week. Uh, you got to make us prepared. Just watch the one, the actual one piece anime. Story. Okay. Yeah. No, the actual one piece story, like the actual story that's coming out, the real story. Oh, okay, this time. Yeah. Watch the style be completely different. <laughs> <laughs> he turns into a slice of life, like magical girl anime. <laughs> <laughs> the magical girl main character wakes up after her pirate dream. <laughs> Wait a minute. She's like, wow, the one what piece an was just a story about the one for. piece. I want to go on an adventure. And it's like, and then it turns into a shoujo magical 1, girl. 1,000 chapters later, I found the one piece. Now we have to go after the two no, piece. No, yeah. wait. No, no. She then wakes. Then you see there was a dream, and it was really a shonen anime <laughs> the way oda writes it would be like okay we're getting to the final arc now we're going to do a 5000 chapter backstory about these characters that leads back to the present where this event's going to happen oh god yeah there's like 50 chapters of backstory in like every arc and it just gets to Why? a point where it's like you meet this character and then they're like i have to tell you something and it's just like backstory that would be like watching zero and then like right before the end of it instead of having the one show that's dedicated to backstory for the one guy that oh yeah animals it's just an entire new season basically based on him talking to animals i Pretty wouldn't much. mind i don't mind if my backstory is like a, a a single chapter about 10 pages long yeah that's fine it's usually that's like okay. 10 chapters long no <laughs> I, I, it's either a 10 page one chapter backstory or it's like a 30 second montage clip in the yeah the, the thing that's that, all i want the thing that uh one piece does is like you you get to a new island so everything is brand new so you start to learn a little bit about the gist of what's going on and then at a certain point you learn why everything's going on and like the deal of this person For so it's you kind see. of like the backstory is a story like all by itself many many it's chapters good. ago yeah <laughs> It reminds also, me, everyone dies in the backstories. That reminds me of the uh, you'll be reading a regular Marvel comic mm -hmm. and they'll reference one thing and they're like, if you want to know why Spider Man said this, <laughs> you should read issue 562 of Amazing Spider Man. But then That's to great. understand that, you should read <laughs> All volume of... one through six of Spectacular Spider Man. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just like, I just want to watch him do the cool web thingy and the kicky punches. The kicky punches where he goes, bam, pow, wah. Yeah, the bad guy goes, oof, ah. Uh, All right. I think we're done now. We're sending off. Yep. So thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you. Thank Always coming back every Most year. Most graciously. We love you. I love you more. That voice made me, messed me up. Not every year. Every week. Uh, the one that's doing the weird voices is Weez. I'm Weez. He is the Weez. The other one doing weird voices is Pyrolis. Bop, 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 bop. I have been Sir Boom. You can find us all on the internet somewhere. You can find Pyrolis at Pyrolis2 Duh. on Twitter and Pyrolis Plays on YouTube. That is name. You can also find Weez at KBW Author on Twitter. Yes. And then KBW Anime on youtube yes and then on instagram at something kbw really Sa same as uh, twitter okay same as twitter so kbw author yes and then you can find me at pyrolis9 on twitter and you can find me wait what pyrolis9 <laughs> <laughs> i have taken your <laughs> no nine <laughs> not yet. pyrolis9 you can find oh my gosh i'm tired you can find me at pyro sir, sir boom, boom nine. sir boom nine 
But you know what? Screw that page. I'm only on the Baka Talk Twitter anyways. So Which don't follow talk that. Back, yeah. talk, talk Baka. Talk Baka. You can also find the Talk Baka YouTube studios. Baka Talk Studios. I'm horrible at my own outro, ain't I? I do it too much. You, gotta, you do you it too much. Out. You didn't start talking super fast. I'm like, crap, I have to do my job now. Anyways, you can find me. You can find us at Baka Talk Studios on YouTube. Yes. Thank you all for listening. Hope you enjoy and see you all later. This is a podcast, an anime podcast. Thanks for watching. Sayonara. See you all later.